could say something like that. Uh, um, anyone has any other idea before I, I, I go on to the reply to that? You don't always that? know what you really need. Or even if you pray for something, it's not always what's good for you. All right. Anyone else? Uh, I don't have anything. Sorry, what? Um, mm -hmm. I have nothing. Um, it maybe that God doesn't doesn't uh, only if you if you pray for stuff, God will only give it to you if it's within His plans. Um. All right. Okay. So yeah, actually, that is correct. So. Some Christians fall into a wrong idea of believing that they have the power on themselves. Although the book of Genesis says that we were made in God's own image, we do not have power on our own. Everything we have is because of Him. When someone performs a miracle, it's not out of His own power, but the power of God. So we are vessels of His power when a miracle occurs. Mm -hmm. So on Math uh, Matthew 17, verse 20, it says, He replied, Because you have so little faith, truly I tell you. If you have faith as small as a, mount, um, as a mustard of seed, you, you will, um, you can say to this, to, you can say this to the mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible to you. So that being said, why is it that you don't see Christians literally moving mountains every, every single day, you know, because if it's that easy. And the reason is because when you read verses in the Bible, you need to read it in context. So uh, the Bible is not saying that God doesn't hear your prayers. He's always listening to you. But uh, what happens is that, as Pine said, actually, when you ask for something, it's, it's not just about you wanting something. Mm -hmm. If you if, if God is going to make it happen, mm -hmm. it, it also has to be within his plans for you. Why? Because we don't really know always what is best for us. So, for instance, God wants the best for you because he loves you. So, he's not going to give you something that is going to har harm you, actually. That is not the idea. Uh, for example, I could say I want, I don't know, like this job or this girlfriend or it could be anything. But God knows all answers. So, one second, I'm going to have to probably block some. Um, ban someone. One second. Uh, it just was just a. I it was probably just a spawning animation. All right. So, um, for example, let's say I ask for this job, but God, God has foreknowledge of everything. So perhaps I'm asking for this job, and God knows that if I if I had that job, I would die, for whatever reason, right? Or maybe I could ask for a lot of money, but God knows that if I actually get all that money, I'm going to go crazy because I cannot handle it. I don't have the maturity to, to handle a lot of money without, you know, temptation and falling into bad things. Um, so God has foreknowledge of everything. So the fact that sometimes God doesn't answer to our prayers the way we want to doesn't mean that he's not listening to us. It's just that God knows what is best for us so he doesn't he doesn't do that but it's all but the Bible is telling us to have faith so it's not like God doesn't love you or anything like that it's just that he, he will do whatever is best for you um, um, now some churches have the, the um, miss um, mi misguide people and, and lead them to think that just because you want something God is gonna magically grant it to you and and that is actually a, a huge, huge, uh, it's really a bad thing. Because some pastors, like, they, they, they teach people, yeah, just pray for it, because that's literally what the Bible is saying. The Bible is saying, on Matthew uh, 20, 21, verse 22, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask in prayer. Mark 11, verse 24, it says, Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. It's pretty straightforward, right? I mean, if you just read that, you could say, yeah, I mean, I can ask for anything and I'm just going to get it. But no, God is not a wizard. God wants the best for you. So not always, it could be that sometimes it does, but not always what you ask in prayer is the best for you. So just as I, the example I gave before, could be that you're asking perhaps for a job, but because God has foreknowledge of everything, he knows if that is actually good for you or not. It could be that you're asking to marry this person and 
uh, God doesn't want that because he knows firsthand that if you do that, you will be miserable. So that's why you don't get it. But some pastors, they tell people, yeah, just believe in it and it will be yours. And, 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 if, you, and if you don't get it, that's because you're, perhaps you're doing something wrong or God doesn't love you or you're not good enough for God or you're not praying enough. No, that's not the answer. That's because it is wrong to believe that why why does why does God will always have to be the same as yours? You see? That it, there is there is nowhere in the Bible where it says that your will is is always what God wants for you. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that. Because we are humans. We are not perfect. The Bible says that only God is good, only God is perfect. So uh he his and because he has foreknowledge of everything, sometimes he's actually not granting you something, not because he doesn't love you or not because he doesn't listen to you, but because he's actually protecting you from yourself. Anyone has any comment or question so far about this? Uh, just hello. <laughs> Sorry for to be late. Oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah. All right. Anyone? Then my question is why pray at all? Why ask for something at all if it's not in God's plan? Then it will, it will not give it to you. But if it is, then because, it, will, it will give it to because, you. Why, why? Okay, yeah, that's a that's a good question. Because, okay, so the Bible is is calling us to pray and to believe in faith. Right? It's it's literally saying it's not saying, hey, do not pray because we don't. I won't do it. No, it's saying, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask in prayer. Now, now it's not saying. Don't don't pray. That's not what the Bible is saying. It's saying if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask in prayer. But also, the Bible says that God has foreknowledge of everything. So God is there is nothing impossible to God. So He is omnipresent. He has all knowledge. So, uh, for example, let's say you have a kid. All right, you have a child, and your child wants something. He wants to. He wants you to let him drink poison. But you you love that child. I mean, so are you going to let him drink poison? Of course you won't, because you know he's going to kill himself. So that, that's that's what God does. That's a, that's a very basic example of what God does with humanity. So the, the Bible is not saying, hey, the, the child is prohibited to ask his parents for, for, for poison. I mean, he can ask for whatever he wants, but sometimes what he asks is not the best for himself. So... The Bible is not telling us not to pray. The Bible is saying, hey, pray, pray, pray all you want, ask all you want. But sometimes God is not going to give it to you because he's actually protecting you. It's not that you shouldn't have faith. It's just that it doesn't happen because God knows why. And he doesn't want you to, to suffer. So he's not going to grant it to you. So some Christians fell into a wrong idea of believing that they have the power on themselves. Although the book of Genesis says that we were made in God's own image. But we do not have the power on our own. Everything we have is because of him. When someone performs a miracle, it is not of his own power, but of the power of God. And we are vessels of his power when a miracle occurs. So that's why it, why it says in Matthew 17, verse 20, he replied, Because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can, uh, you can say to this mountain, move for here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible to you. So, yes, God will grant your wishes if you have faith, but the Bible also tells us not to tempt God. If our wishes are whimsical or evil, so for example, I can say, God, please kill this person because I hate him. God is definitely not going to do that. Why? Because if, he, if God did that, well, first of all, that is a whimsical thing. And second, God is not evil, all right? So, so if you ask for something evil just to kill a random person, God is not going to grant it to you because he will be violating his own commandment. And, you know, one of, the, one of the Ten Commandments is you should not murder. So if God is commanding you not to murder, why would he murder for you? You see, some people, so some people say, oh man, I really wish this and that. And then they, they get frustrated because God doesn't grant it to you, them. And then they, they stop believing. Some people do that. It's not because God doesn't listen to them or, or because he doesn't love them. It's because he's actually protecting them from themselves. So sometimes God will not grant our wishes, but everything he does and doesn't do is according to his plan. If God does 
does not grant a wish is because he's, it is not aligned to his perfect plan. So, and here, here's the problem, guys. Like some churches will tell you, just, just pray for it and, 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 and it's going to happen. And it's not going to happen. It's a lie. So it, it's not going to happen. And they're going to, and they're going to use those verses, those in Matthew, Matthew 20, 21, verse 22, and Matthew 11, verse 24, saying, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe, and it will be yours. They will use that, that verse out of context to try to trick people. And the worst part is that some, some churches even use this as a, um, as a business model. So they actually tell, yeah, you need, to, you need to do this and pray, and you need to tithe. And if, you, and if God is not granting your wish, then it's because you're not tithing or you're not giving enough money to the church or you're not praying enough. And that is a super toxic and fake um, vision. It, it is actually a prostitution. It's actually an, an abomination and a twisted uh, vision of what the Bible actually says. The Bible is not saying pay for miracles. No, nowhere in the Bible does it say you should pay for miracles. You know, because the gospel is not for sale. So, first the San Elishans 5.18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this will be, <clears throat> this, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So, even when you have hardships, remember, guys, this, <clears throat> this life is just temporary, right? Not None of us is going to be here in 100 years. We're all, we're all going to be dead. But what, what the Bible offers us and, and uh, what, what we can have uh, hope for is to have eternal life. That's why, that's why John 3 verse, 20, uh, verse 16, it says, God loved humanity so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross so that whoever believes in him sh shall not perish but have eternal life. So that is what the Bible actually promises. So we can be certain of that. Uh, if we believe and we repent from our sins, he's, he's going to give us eternal life. God is, not gonna, God is not promising us riches, wealth, money, cars, women. That is not what God is promising us. God may, God may give us things in this world if he wants to, but that's not his, his, his important promise. The important promise that the Bible gives us is eternal life. So Christianity is not about material things. It's not about you getting wealthy is not about you buying the gospel it's not about that that is not what the bible says so some churches some pastors may use this as a way to make money but that is not good and those pastors will have to be accountable to god for what they're doing so in ephesians 5 verse uh, 17 it says therefore do not be foolish but understand what will the lord what will of the lord is that does not mean uh, we must not believe. The Bible says we should always believe. So in James 1 verse 6 it says, But when you ask, you must believe and have no doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave on the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. It is impossible to please God if we have, if we, sorry, it is impossible to please God if we do not have faith in Him. Because in Hebrews 10 verse 6, which is actually the verse Pine posted, posted on our Discord, it's says, and without faith it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek, seek him. So faith, faith is so important that it is essential for Christian life. Only through faith, prayer, and study of the scripture is that we are able to actually understand the will of God. So if you go to Romans 1 verse 17, it says, for those in the gospel, the righteous of God is re righteousness of God is revealed a righteousness that is by faith from first to last just as it is written the, right, the right, righteous will live by faith so what is this saying let's let's analyze it step by step it's saying for it is the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed so in the gospel what is the gospel anyone knows what is the gospel How can you define in, in your own word so, yeah. what the gospel is? The, the, the fact, the story that uh, Jesus, the the Son of God, came came down to earth and died for our sins. That's the gospel. Right. Then, well, yeah, it's actually on um, it's actually on John three verse sixteen. That's they they call it the gospel in a verse because it's it literally summarizes it. So it's for God loved humanity so much that he sent his only son. It's talking about Jesus. 
to die so that anyone who believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So that is the gospel. So anyone who believes in Jesus and repents from his sins is guaranteed eternal life. That is the gospel. So it says, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. That's why it's saying the righteous will live by faith. Because even when you die, what the Bible is promising you is if you believe in Jesus and you repent, you will have eternal life. So that's why it's saying the righteous will live by faith. Uh, unlike all other religions on earth, Christianity is not about salvation by own merits, but salvation by grace. As such, grace can, can only be received by believing in Jesus who saved us from damnation. So, it's in John 11 verse 25, it says, Jesus say, said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live. Even though they die, whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? That is what Jesus said on John 11 verse 25. And John, um, in 1 John 5 verse 4, it says, For anyone born in God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. And finally, in John 6 verse 35, it says, When Jesus this is declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So, unfortunately, we live in a fallen world, and, mo and, uh, and not everyone will accept this message of salvation, even though the gospel of Jesus is a gospel of good news and grace for everyone. So, God is literally saying, he's giving the, he's giving the, the opportunity for everyone to be saved. Everyone, literally. So it's saying, and, and um, it's saying, when Jesus declared, "I am the bread of life," whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. No, he's not talking about this world. He's not. It's not saying that Christians around the world will never be hungry and thirsty. No, we still live in this world. What he, what the Bible, what the Bible is actually talking about is, once you die, because this is not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is in heaven. So what it's saying is, once you have eternal life, once you die, once you go to heaven, you will never be thirsty, you will never be hungry, you will never suffer. So that is what the Bible promises us. So when the, when the Bible says about having faith and such, it's not commenting about materialistic, worldly things. I mean, of course, you can pray God if you want a job, but you can pray God if you want, you know, if you're in trouble. You can, play, you can pray to God if you have a hardship. The Bible is not saying that you cannot pray. You can, of course, you can pray for those things. But always keep in mind that if God is not doing something for you, it's not because He doesn't love you or He doesn't hear you. It's because He's He's He is actually protecting you from something else. Because you don't have all variables. You don't have all knowledge. You don't have foreknowledge of everything. So it could be that. You're asking for someone something that it would end up being bad for you, even even though you even you don't even realize it. So Romans 14 verse one: Accept the one whose faith is weak, without quarreling over disputable matters. So having faith in God is essential for Christian life because our entire religion is about this very specific verse. It's, it's about this very specific verse. Why? Because in Christianity. Christianity is a religion of salvation by faith. It's not salvation by acts. And that's actually what differentiates Christianity from any other religion in the world. So if you ask a Muslim, he's oh, going to tell you about, about, for example, the, uh, the five pillars, which is a uh, part of Muslim theology. So they're going to tell you, you need to do the five pillars. You need to do works and uh, to try to earn your salvation. If you ask a Jew, he's going to tell you that you need to do good deeds to try to earn your salvation when you die. If you ask a Hindu or a Buddhist, they're going to tell you that you need to meditate and you need to do several other things to try to achieve nirvana. You need to, they, because they believe in karma and, and good deeds and bad, bad deeds. And Christianity is none of that. In Christianity, if you go to the book of Romans, well, it, it, it says there is no one righteous, not even one. So no, no matter what we do, the Bible is saying that we are not righteous. So how can we be saved if nobody's righteous? It's because, and that's the entire point of Jesus. Jesus died for our sins, so that if we believe in him, we shall have eternal life, not 
Not because of works, because you know that 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 is another misinterpretation. Like people think that um, being a Christian is just about being a good person. No, no, it's not just about that. Now, of course, it's not about being a horrible person and and and, and you know not repenting for harming anyone and, and being an immoral person. It's also not not about that. You should try not to sin. You will fail because you're a human. That's actually what the Bible is saying. You will fail. But but you won't you won't go to heaven because you're a good person because the Bible is actually saying that nobody's righteous not even one so uh, the the you will go to heaven because this is it's a gift from God if you believe in Him the Bible is saying that you will have eternal life so in Christianity salvation is a gift it's not something you earn as in all other religions so from the moment you start believing in and you truly repent from your sins. You are guaranteed salvation, uh, unlike on any, any other religion, uh, where you actually have to do good deeds and then hope once you die that you are saved. That that's what they believe in. But Christians don't believe in that. Christians believe that we we are saved by faith in Jesus alone, and that's the entire purpose of Him dying on the cross. I mean, there's literally no other reason why He died on the cross. So He paid for our sins, so that we can be saved. Um, he paid. For all of our sins. Uh, now, I'm not saying that, that is a license to sin, and then Christians should go and sin all they want. No, that's not what the Bible is saying. No, because the Bible is saying that we should faith without works is dead faith. But and, and here's the catch: it's not saying that you are saved by works. No, it's saying that you are saved by faith, because it's saying for everyone, Jesus said to her, "I am the resurrection and the life." So, the one who believes in me will live even though they die, I mean in this world, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die, right? So it's saying, the one who believes in me will live. It's talking about faith. It's not saying, so anyone who is a good person will not die. No, it's not saying that. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that good people will not die. No, because we are not righteous. So what, what, Jesus, is, what Jesus is saying is, hey guys, None of us is going to make it to heaven, all right? So uh, by, by your own works, by your own deeds, because all of you are humans and you are imperfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to die on the cross for you so that I'm going to pay for your sins. And you are going to be able to go to heaven because I paid for you with my own blood. And, and if you believe in me, you're guaranteed salvation. That's what the Bible is saying. So Christianity is not a religion about just being a good guy. No. And Christians... Uh, sin i mean i sin everyone does we try to not to sin we we should try we should try to obey the commandments because god wants us to be as, as as free of sin as possible but he knows that we will fail anyway so in the end none of us will go to heaven because of god wants uh, we are free of sin we go because of grace and, and mercy it's to be for those who believe in Jesus. So on, on John 3 verse 16 it says, For God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, so whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, uh, before we wrap up, anyone anyone has any comment or questions so far? Nah. Nope. Alright, so to wrap up guys, 